Um, and today we finally, finally uh, got him, uh, got a decision from the New York City Police Commissioner, which to tell you the truth, um, watching, I guess in a way, it, it's good because there would have been mass, mass outrage, mass, mass outrage uh, if he wasn't fired. But watching, watching the clip of the police commissioner uh, announcing the firing of um, Daniel Pantaleo, the um, officer who choked Eric Garner to death live on, on video, uh, to me was very um, beyond bittersweet, bitter. And I'll tell you why. I think the police commissioner, if you saw the clip where he um, really just went out of his way to make it seem like Daniel Pantaleo was this great officer with, you know, many, many years of great service and the police commissioner was saying, I might have done the same thing if I were him. And the police commissioner was also giving this talk um, of, the, 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 this talk of, well, Eric Garner was, you know, shouldn't have been resisting arrest and all these things. He fired him. Um, he really deferred to the police judge. You know, the police department has judges and things like that. He fired him and really went out of his way to basically say, say we're firing him because he broke uh, police protocol, used an illegal chokehold, all of this. But to me, he went out of his way to make it seem like, in a way, could have happened to any police officer. In a way, there's gray area here, and it might have been justifiable. And if I was a cop on the street that day, I don't know what I would have done. So I think the police commissioner tried to have it both ways, where, with a gun, figuratively, with a gun to his head, um, and the, the eyes of the nation on him, make it seem like Eric Garner shouldn't have resisted arrest. And, you know, initially the officer was in the right uh, for the initial altercation. And to me, uh, I'm not a black guy, obviously, but to me as a white dude watching, I think fundamentally um, why the police commissioner is wrong in some of the things he said today is this. We have in America, and the media plays a huge, huge role in this. First of all, the media plays a huge part in this fetishizing and this, this pedestal we put police on, okay? Just because a police officer comes up to you and says, uh, you know, you're under arrest or this and that, doesn't mean you have to immediately, doesn't mean you have to immediately drop your, you know, put your hands up and say, yes, sir, or, you know, if it's a female officer, you're allowed to ask, what is it that I am being arrested for? They are not kings, he or she, police officer. And Eric Garner was standing uh, on the side of a, uh, in the front of a, a store. And what the police com commissioner didn't mention is that the police had an issue with Eric Garner uh, unrelated to him standing in front of that store. And that they didn't like that, uh, you know, there were some calls being made ar around that neighborhood about crime totally unrelated to Eric Garner. So when not one police officer, not two police officers, not three, not four, there were five or six officers that approached Eric Garner. Is a man, especially a black man in America, not allowed to ask for what is it that you're arresting me for? Obviously he threw up his hands and, and said, come on, man, you know, I'm paraphrasing, you watch the video. He wasn't resisting arrest in terms of running he wasn't arresting, uh, ar you know, he wasn't uh, fiercely or aggressively resisting arrest. And I think, you know, the media likes, uh, and frankly, a lot of older people like to push this mentality of do whatever the police obey no matter what. And I'm not saying disobey the police if you get pulled over and, you know, drive away. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, be confrontational with the police uh, if they're you know, if it's a civil, if they are being civil. But if, you know, a, 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 a basically a unofficial army of five or six cops come up to you while you're standing there minding your own business, I don't think Eric Garner did anything wrong by A, asking what, what is your problem? What are you arresting me for? 
He, he, if, if you saw the video, he said, you know, you guys won't stop harassing me. But this is the mentality of occupying forces. It's, we are the power, we have the badge, we have the gun, and you will do what we say. And the police commissioner made a comment that, you know, society gives police a, uh, uh, the judgment or the authority to use a reasonable, um, what was his terms? A reasonable amount of force. That was his terms. No, you, police don't have an unlimited use of force in America. And let's be clear, when he says, oh, the New York Police Department, the New York City Police Department did not, um, did not rule on this for five years, did not choose to fire him or do anything for five years because they were told to let the civil rights or the federal uh, process play out if there were going to be federal charges. That's not true. The, the New York City Police Department could have acted as early as, the next, as that day or the next day. It had no bearing on whether federal charges were brought against Daniel Pantaleo. So, although, although it's a positive thing that he was fired, this does not mean, you know, let's, let's, let's have a party and, you know, police are really going to think twice now if they, you know, want to harass a black man on the side of the street or how to bring him down. Really, the reason that even the bare minimum of justice came, and this is the bare minimum of justice, Anyone with eyes should see this man, this cop, who, by the way, is losing his pension, should be in jail because the New York City Police Commissioner said today he, the use of that chokehold was against police protocol, a.k.a., I don't know if it's against the law, but against the police training and protocol. So if what he was doing was against police training and protocol, then it goes to intent. Was there an intent to harm Eric Garner? Well, if you are trained not to use chokeholds and the man is scre screaming 11 times, I cannot breathe and you do not release, to me, a reasonable standard is you are intending to bring this man down by any means necessary. And you're, and that is reckless homicide because you are not concerned with whether you are harming or possibly killing someone. It's that simple. It's that simple. Uh, Eric Garner's daughter, his family spoke. Uh, I, I, you know, I think they are satisfied, I wouldn't say happy, satisfied that this police, police officer has been fired, but it's not gonna bring back their father, their grandfather, the son of his mother. And it really is pretty scandalous that it took over five years for this to happen. To remind you of how the family has been impacted here, here's just a short clip uh, when I covered a protest a couple weeks ago. Here's Eric Garner's cousin uh, before, obviously, Pantaleo was fired. This is on the eve of the five-year anniversary of Garner's death. I, 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 I'm confused as why it's taking so long for an investigation. Five years to investigate something that's caught on video, something that had 22 eyewitnesses, something that even that had two Emmy reports that ruled it a homicide. He heard him saying, I can't breathe until he couldn't say it no more. How, how is it that across this nation, and state after state, unarmed black men, women, and children are being gunned down with no repercussions, and it's coming from law enforcement. Law enforcement. It, it, if, if they are in charge of our safety, then who are they keeping safe? Only white people? Because every black person is getting murdered, there's no repercussions. Yep. Nobody is checking their hand. What are they, what are they the terrorists of America? They're certainly acting like it. If I get into an altercation in the street, I'm afraid to call the cops because I will have two enemies at my side. Who am I going to turn to when I need help? I can't call the police. 
The police is murdering us. I'm afraid for my sons and daughters and the rest of my family. My cousins, they, everybody. My aunts, my mother, my mother's 80 years old. I make sure that I go out with her when she go down places because they're killing old women too, if they're black. That was Eric Garner's cousin, and this is Eric Garner's youngest daughter, who was only was alive for three months, only was alive for three months before this happened, and her father, who she'll never know, uh, was killed. All right. What do we want it? We want justice now. Now. We want justice. We want justice. Now. We want justice. Now. This stuff. So it's really tragic. I mean, there's no other way to put it. There's no winners here. And frankly, this cop is lucky. He's only facing. This cop is lucky. He's only facing losing his pension. There might be another police department somewhere in a small bumble whatever city that hires him back. But Eric Garner's family will not get him back. And make no mistake, the firing of Daniel, Daniel Pantaleo does not magically, you know, put a chill over police in this country when it comes to black men. When systemic racism, when systemic racism is so ingrained in society and the police force, the only thing that will change it is leadership and I don't think we have that yet in America and I'm saying that as a white girl white guy but I've covered a lot of police brutality protests and I think I'll unfortunately still have to cover a lot of police brutality protests but at the very least it is a step in the right direction that this police officer was fired even over five years too late Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.